Now that the new milling cam project is created and the cam part is fully defined, we can begin adding the operations to machine this part. Now in looking at this part as a whole, we know that we can complete the programming in basically four 2.5D milling operations, which I'll cover in the next four videos. Note that during the programming, I'll also explain some of the parameters we'll be using in detail to help familiarize you with the specific technologies, showing you the how and why we're using them. So let's start off with adding our first operation to the CAM part, and then we'll go from there. We'll begin by adding a face milling operation to remove the excess material on top of this part. In the Inventor Cam Manager, right-click the Operations header. When the menu appears, hover over the Add Milling Operations submenu. As we are presented with a list of operations that we can add to the cam part, select the option of Face. The Face Milling Operation dialog box appears and shows us the workflow in InventorCam. As we move forward with these Jumpstart videos, you'll notice that most operations will follow this same type of workflow. In the Operation dialog box and moving down the tree, we'll first need to define the geometry, followed by creating and choosing a tool, picking the milling levels, defining the type of technology to use, and finally choosing the lead-in and lead-out tool movements on the link page. Working from top to bottom, let's define the machining geometry. First, click the New button. We have several ways to choose our geometry around the part. The geometry is the boundary that controls where our toolpath will be created. Since our target model is defined, we can leave the default option of Model for the mode of selection. Under Options in the Base Geometry section, click the drop-down and select Target from the list. This selection will automatically create a boundary around the outside of the part, and that's exactly where we want our toolpath to work. Let's go ahead and click Finish to accept the selection. Next, we have to define a tool suitable for face milling. To start the tool definition, first switch to the tool page. Since we have yet to create a tool, I'll show you how to build one in InventorCam. Click the Select button to bring up the Choosing Tool for Operation dialog box with Part Tool Table. Click the Add Milling Tool button here at the bottom left. For this operation, we'll use a face mill as our tool type. By choosing Face Mill from the list, we are presented with several options. For this series of Jumpstart videos, we're only going to focus on two of the tabs for right now. They are Topology and Tool Data. The topology gives us control over the physical dimensions of the tool. As you can see on the left, we can easily switch between metric and standard units of measurement when entering tool values. Let's leave the default units millimeters. For this operation, enter a value of 100 millimeters in the diameter field. You can also set things like corner radius, arbor diameter, tool length, outside holder length, and cutting length. For this example though, leave the remaining default tool parameters. Now go ahead and switch to the Tool Data tab. Here, we can control our feeds and speeds. So for example, let's use a feed XY and feed finish of 100 millimeters per minute and a feed Z of 33 millimeters per minute. We'll also want a spin rate of 1000 RPMs in a clockwise direction. Now we can click select to accept the tool definition and to also choose the tool for the operation. So looking at our workflow, next on the tree is the levels page. The first group we'll look at is the positioning levels. The clearance level value is pulled from the coordinate system settings. The safety distance value is pulled from the MAC file of our post processor. The second group is the milling levels, which we'll pick right off the model. To define the upper level, which is the top of our stock in this case, click the upper level button. Then, simply pick on the top corner of the stock box in the graphics window. And click OK to accept the selection. Next, we'll define the face depth, which represents the surface we want to machine to. Click the face depth button 
and then pick on the top face of the target model. Click OK to accept the selection. Now notice how the face depth field has changed color. Now your background color may be different as defined in the InventorCam settings, but nevertheless the highlighted field indicates that the value is associative to the picked entity. And this means that if the model changes, the associative value will automatically update in accordance with the design change. So that completes the milling levels definitions. Let's now move on to the technology page. We have several technologies to choose from, which can be chosen from this drop-down list. When selecting the desired strategy, you'll notice that the technology appears on a separate tab for better organization of the parameters. We have our hatch option, which is pictured here, giving us a back and forth toolpath motion, stepping over until the entire top surface is machined. The second option is contour, which follows the boundary chain stepping from the outside in until it machines the top surface. The third option is one pass. Because our tool is wider than the part, we can machine the entire face in just one pass. The last option in the list is spiral, which chooses the machining pattern automatically. For this example, we'll use one pass. Now, let's switch back to the technology tab for a moment. We also have the option of taking a finish pass with the finish checkbox enabled and an added value to the floor offset field. For this example, however, we will not add a finish pass. Lastly, let's switch to the link page. Now having selected one pass for the technology we want to use, we only have two options available for lead in and lead out. They are none and tangent. None simply means that the tool will not be leading into or out of the cut. By selecting tangent, the tool will lead in and lead out through these values set by us, the user. If we would like to keep our lead out the same as our lead in, we can enable the same as lead in checkbox and it will set the lead out equal to the lead in. For this operation, let's choose none for the lead in and lead out. Now we can click save and calculate to add this face milling operation to the camp tree and calculate the tool path. Now if you're prompted with a message upper level is above coordsys upper level, OK, enable the don't ask again option and then click yes as we know that this is the case. At this point, let's take a look at the generated toolpath now that the operation is calculated. By clicking the simulate button, the simulation control panel will appear in a new window. Note that we have several different modes and available options to present our toolpath, which I'll explain later. For now, let's just quickly review the wireframe toolpath. To do that, we'll use the default simulation mode called HostCAD. As we click the play button, the wireframe toolpath will be displayed on our model in the graphics window. The generated toolpath feeds down, moves across the part in one pass, and then retracts away. Since this is exactly the result we're looking for, we can now move on to adding our next operation. To close the simulation, click the exit button. This will take us back to the face milling operation dialog box, which we can also exit at this time. Next up, we'll add a profile operation to our camp part, which will get us one step closer to completing the part programming. 